Brittany Bly. I'm the founder of Pop Shop America, and we are going to do a craft along where we are going to make some glass etching pint glasses. I've got Hanson the Kitty Cat here with me. You can follow his adventures on Instagram. He actually has an Instagram, uh, which is Hanson the Kitty Cat, if you want to follow him. And we post really cute cat videos and cat photos. But he wanted to join us for this crafting, so we're glad to have him. So let me show you the finished glass etched pint glasses that I have right here. I have two different sets. So here's the first one. These are monogram initial pint glasses. So one um, is for myself and then one I made for my boyfriend. And before we shot this video, I actually had to pull these out of our dishwasher and hand wash them because this is my boyfriend's favorite glass. He goes straight for it. It's so cute. It's so simple. I think it like makes him feel good, you know, that like I made him something and it's usable and you know, it's cute and it like kind of makes him feel special. So he always uses this first. So it's like constantly dirty, which is great. And then here's the one that I made for myself. And I'm going to show you a couple more that we have that are finished. If you visit these tutorials, these glass etching tutorials on the blog at Pop Shop America, these are the exact same glasses that you will see. So you can find all of this content in written form at popshopamerica.com on the blog. And <laughs> I knew we were going to get a cat I knew we were going to happen. We were going to get a cat at any moment. Okay. <laughs> all right. So if you go to the blog at popshopamerica.com, these are the exact same glasses that you will see. Um, and you'll see all of the same stuff that we're going to talk about in this video in written form. So just depending on your personality and what's easier for you to understand, please do feel free to check it out. We're also always glad to help, so you can comment on the blog, you can comment on the video, and we'll answer all of your questions. So with these pint glasses, I actually made Deathly Hallows pint glasses because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. Um, so if you guys want to comment below of what house you're in, if you're a Harry Potter fan, or if you want to guess what house I'm in. And I bet most of you that have read the blog or know anything about Pop Shop America or know me personally will know exactly what house I'm in because it's pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm going to show you guys the box. Again, this is the um, glass etching kit that is the Craft and Style subscription box for October of 2019. So if you're a box subscriber, then this is the featured box. So these are probably the items that you're going to receive. Otherwise, you can use these same materials, work on your own, um, and still make this DIY that we're making today. But the way that we did it is as a subscription box with all of these different supplies included. So let's open it up, see what's inside. So this is what it looks like. It's pretty big. Um, this is definitely one of our bigger and heavier boxes, and that's always like really fun when you get it in the mail. When you first get any of our kits, any of our subscription boxes, I would recommend opening this up first. You're going to find not only what the featured box is, what it's called, you're going to find a supply list of what's included. You're probably going to find some personalized messages in here as well. So for example, if somebody gave this to you as a gift, and they wanted to include a note in that gift, you're going to find it in here. If your box is due for renewal, you're going to have some coupon codes inside. If it's your first box, you're going to have a welcome message, which just gives you all of the basics of how you can find us, if you have a question or a concern, um, how you can get free boxes or coupon codes, all kinds of stuff that's personalized just for you right inside of here. And then all of your box contents here. So the first thing that you're going to see on top, you're going to see this every single month, you're going to see some full color instructions and details on what the project is. So this month we have how to make um, stencil glassware, we have how to cut your own stencil, and then we also have some cool um, glass edging projects that you can try that are beyond the box. And the reason that this one is extra fun for this October Craft and Style box is that the glass etching cream that you get inside of the box. For making all of the pint glasses that I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial, which are four pint glasses total, you're literally going to use about half a teaspoon of this, maybe even less, like a quarter teaspoon. So this glass etching cream, um, will you'll be able to use it across multiple projects. So having some different projects in mind for the future is going to be really, really fun. 
So those are our instructions. We've seen our glass etching cream. We've also got these really awesome alphabet stencils. There's actually three different styles of stencils that are included. So hopefully you'll find a font that you really respond to, that you like. They're all a little bit different. Again, here's that glass etching cream. Now we've got a box cutter, which is gonna go with this stencil paper. The stencil paper, this is a sticker stencil paper, and it's actually got like a marbled pattern, which is gonna be a little bit easier to see, a little bit easier to cut when you're making stencils for the first time with a marble pattern instead of white, because it, you just can kind of conceptualize the space a little bit better. So that's why we did that. We also have some cute pre-made sticker stencils. Everyone will get a little variety. Um, some of them have flowers or nature things, or this one in front has birds. Um, there's also things that are maybe like a little bit more like heavy metal even, like there's some that have like scorpions and stuff. So lots of different styles. So hopefully some that fit your personality. Here are some gloves. You do not have to use these when you're working with glass etching, but I included them just in case you have any concerns. You definitely wanna do everything you can to avoid keeping any of this glass etching cream away from your skin, off of your skin. If you get it on your skin, just immediately wash it with soap and water very quickly. Um, if you get it anywhere else, then you need to call poison control. There are instructions on the bottle. Um, these are popsicle sticks that we're gonna use to apply the glass etching cream toward my glasses when we're using it. And then last, we have our pint glasses. Those are all of the box supplies this month. Uh, your box is definitely going to look a lot cuter than mine does right now. Uh, mine, of course, I don't want to put any packaging or wrap every, everything in bubble wrap because then you'll just watch a video, a 20 minute video of me unwrapping bubble wrap. So yours will be um, hopefully protected really well and also look really cute where mine is just a little bit more simple. So here's the thing with glass etching cream is, yes, it is a chemical and we do want to be really careful with it. Of course, we included gloves in this kit that we have sent to you. Um, but the thing that's important to know is that it's when you're working with it and you put it on, you know, a popsicle stick or a brush, it's not going to be big chunks, you know, that potentially, you know, you make a mess with or that end up on your skin or something like that. It's actually like as you're working with a popsicle stick, every now and again just the tiniest little flecks of the glass etching cream will kind of fling and you'll almost notice like as you're working if you get some on you that you just have the tiniest little dot of almost like an itching sensation so in a case like that if you just wash your hands with soap and water you'll be totally fine it's important to you know kind of work slowly with it so that you can reduce any amount you know that ends up in places where you don't mean it to go um, but it's certainly not I mean it's not like a dangerous material I don't want anybody to be afraid of it in that way um, it's really fun and cool you know for making these great projects and the great thing about glass etching is that all of these projects are really stylish they're really versatile you can make them a lot of different ways this makes a great gift this would even be a lovely holiday gift or a wedding gift. Um, so that's the thing that I think makes it so great as well. And so I'm not going to use gloves, but again, I've done this a thousand times. We've taught this as in-person workshops. We've done this for private parties. You know, I've done this on the blog a million times. So I'm really comfortable with it. But for you guys, please do feel free to put on some gloves. So here are the stencils that I used in the blog post. So they might look familiar. Here is the exact Deathly Hallows um, stencil that I used, and these are really hilarious. These were in a kid's sticker stencil kit, so obviously I pulled them out because we weren't going to send them to box subscribers, but then as a joke, I posted in my Insta stories a poll that said, like, do you think we should send these out to our box subscribers? And it was like a photo of this, and 100% of people said yes. So I don't know, maybe we want to make like a, you know, a stencil glass. Maybe we'll just stick with the Deathly Hallows. And then here are the rest of those alphabet stencils that we included in our box. But alphabet stencils are definitely a popular thing if you're working from your own materials, working on your own. So um, 
If you're working with stencils that don't have a sticker back, then just make sure that you cut them out to where they have a border all the way around um, so that you have an edge um, and that way you can make sure to just put the cream inside the interior of the stencil. So if you're basically cutting out stencils in the way that we did, make sure that it has a border all the way around. You're also gonna need painter's tape. You don't need that if you're working with these sticker stencils. So I'm actually gonna start um, this first glass with a sticker stencil just because it's a little bit easier. Um, and so it's a great way to get started. So I'm just peeling it off, super simple. These will re-stick a thousand times. Um, these are um, intended for like body art, temporary tattoos. You can find them for henna. All of them are literally gonna be the same. So it just depends on what style of stencil you're looking for and how they're labeling it just to you know be able to sell it to you. So whenever we're doing a sticker stencil on a curved surface, like a glass, we always wanna start in the center. So I'm basically just gonna push this top edge down. And once I feel like I have it correctly, perfectly up and down without it being angled or without it like looking weird and wonky, which this looks pretty good to me through the center. Vince, does it look good to you through pretty the center? Good, yeah. yep. Okay, so from there, I'm actually gonna work from the center out. So it's just like if you go to your cell phone store and they put on the cell phone protective screen for you, and you know they have like this perfect technique to putting on that screen, really similar. I always recommend starting in the center, but I think in a lot of cases there would be people that would start from one edge and work their way across. So do feel free to experiment and see what works for you. But for me, starting in the center, working your way out, sticking it, sticking it down just a small piece at a time, and then making sure that all of the stencil is down. So you're definitely gonna wanna press down across the entire surface, not just one piece or one edge. And then once we have our stencil in place and it looks good to us, which to me, this looks pretty good, it looks pretty even, we're good to go. The thing is, is that your stencil is gonna be 100% unforgiving. So you need to have it perfectly placed before you add any glass etching cream. So the reason that we always want to do one stencil at a time, we never apply multiple stencils at once, is because we need to make sure that there's plenty of border around the area where we're adding the glass etching cream. These letters are actually overlapping each other. So there's no way to put two stencils on at the same time and have that glass etching cream be able to fill in the gaps and have them overlap in that way. So what we have to do is we lay down one stencil, we add the glass etching cream, we wash it off completely, we dry the glass completely, then we do a second round of glass etching with a second set of stencils. So we always work one at a time, unless you're working on a project that the pieces can be far apart from each other, in which case you could add all of the stencils at once. So if you're doing anything close or in a general proximity to each other, one at a time, but if they're really far away, separate, you can do them all at once. So we've got our Deadly Hallows, um, stencil laid down, I've got my glass chin cream, I've got my popsicle sticks, so you guys are definitely going to want to wear gloves. Um, and we're going to add just the tiniest little bit to the surface. So if you see this glass chin cream, it has like a gritty, kind of a crazy looking texture, and I just put a tiny bit, like less than a quarter teaspoon, on the end of my popsicle stick. You could also use a paint paintbrush for this. The reason that I like using popsicle sticks is you can just throw them away afterwards. And so it's just a little bit more disposable, which is nice. But a brush can be really um, nice because you can get very clean, perfect lines and edges. So I'm gonna turn this stencil towards me for just a quick second to make sure that I'm getting the edges so I can see them really clearly. And then I'll turn it back to you guys so you can see all of this filled in. So there we go. I've got my glass etching cream on the surface 
And then what I usually do is I'll set a kitchen timer for five minutes. So I am going to leave this on for five minutes. Then I'm gonna take my popsicle stick and I'm gonna swirl the surface of the glass stitching cream to make sure that there's not any air bubbles that I can't see that are on the glass itself. And I'm gonna leave it on for another five minutes. The instructions on any glass stitching cream are gonna tell you to leave the glass stitching cream on for just five minutes total. I do not recommend doing that. I always recommend leaving it on for 10 minutes instead. One, because you want a very clean, smooth, even frost across your entire glass etched surface. So um, you might run into problems like air bubbles or if like one little edge, you know, didn't quite get as much as like another part, you might see some inconsi inconsistencies at five minutes. Um, another reason that I always leave the glass stitching cream, cream on for 10 minutes instead of five is because over time, this will lose its potency. This, this is a lot of glass stitching cream and this is gonna work across multiple projects. So this might be one of those craft supplies that you still have three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, especially at maybe like three to six months after you first open it and it's exposed to oxygen it's gonna to start to degrade in quality just ever so slightly. And so I don't think that five minutes is long enough for you to get a consistent frost to your surface. 10 minutes is a lot better. So that way, if you, if you just always as a rule, leave it on for 10 minutes instead of five, it's just a lot better for having a clean, perfect, consistent, gorgeous finish. And then you just don't have to worry about it. You don't have to um, make any adjustments later down the road. Um, we're going to give it a swirl and then we're going to remove the glass stitching cream at 10. So it's been about three minutes, but I'm just going to go ahead and swirl it because it's fine. All right, so we're going to work on our second pint glass glass etching project. So you can see all of the different steps from beginning to end with some different materials. So I vote that we work with these regular stencils so you can see how I lay them down to the surface of the glass if you don't have a sticker stencil, if you're just working with a regular stencil. Um, so let's just get a fresh glass. What should I, should I make a handsome the kitty cat glass? I feel like I should. I guess his last name, I guess handsome the cat, his last name would be Bly. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll just put an H. So if you come across these stencils in this October craft and style box, or if you're working on your own, you don't have to just stick to the stencils that you're finding online or that you find in the store in person. You can make your own. They're so fun and they're so easy to make. You can make, it's so versatile. You can make anything you want. Um, all you need is sticker stencil paper, vinyl sticker paper. Um, oftentimes you can find it also labeled as shelf paper. It's the exact same thing. If you get it as shelf paper, it might actually be a little bit more affordable. So that might be a great option. And then you can make anything your heart desires. So here is the stencil that I just cut that says hi. That's what we're gonna affix to this glass right here. But just really quickly, I do wanna run you through how to make your own stencil because it's so fun, it's so easy, it's really stylish, which is basically, you're gonna need some sticker stencil paper just like this and you're gonna need either scissors or a box cutter. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna draw on the back of the sticker stencil paper what your image is gonna be. Geometric lines are gonna be really, really easy. Um, if you are making anything that's a mirror image, like a heart, for example, you could actually fold it and cut through the center, which is a nice way to do it. Um, but it could be like organic shapes, it can be hearts, stars, flowers, basically anything you want, anything you can imagine. What you're doing, what the important characteristics are, is that you're gonna be cutting something on the inside and it's gonna have a solid border around the outside. This is just like my stencil here. If you're cutting your own, just think about how you can apply those different characteristics to what you're making. So you're always gonna cut an interior and then you're gonna have a physical border, right? But that's basically the gist. That's, that's just how you cut your own stencil. So here I've got mine that says hi. I've got my painter's tape. I'm gonna go ahead and cut 
many sections of painter's tape and have those ready so that we can apply the stencil. And then the important thing is that we want to stick the stencil down all the way around, not just on one edge. We want to put the stencil down all the way around the border. Now we're working with two letters at once. So it might be a little bit more challenging to make sure that it's laying down perfectly flat, right? There's more opportunity for parts of the stencil to be raised because we're working with a larger stencil. So again, if you wanna work with one stencil at a time, it's a great approach. In that case, all you would need to do is cut these letters away from each other and just work on them one at a time. I've done this a million times. I don't mind experimenting. If it's messed up, then we'll know, and that'll be a great experiment. So I'm glad to give it a whirl and see what works and kind of stretch the boundaries of what we can do with crafting. Um, that's always really fun for me. So I'm gonna take my first piece of painter's tape and my stencil, and I'm actually gonna apply that before I lay it down to the surface of the glass just because it's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to lay it flat. So uh, the reason that I want to apply the painter's tape to the stencil before I set it down is now I can put my hands across the entire stencil and once I have it in the perfect spot, I can start to press down on that tape. Basically, I have a little bit more opportunity to lay it exactly where I want it when I put one piece of tape on the stencil first and now what I can do is I can just start to wrap it around the exterior edges. So I'm actually just for convenience I'm going to turn this around and lay it down but I will show you everything that I've done. So I am pressing the edges of the stencil flat. It's really important that the stencil is as taut to the surface of the glass as possible. Because we don't have a sticker behind it, it's really easy for the stencil to raise in parts, and we wanna minimize the amount that the stencil is lifting away from the glass. That's an important quality of working with this type of stencil. So I'm pulling it taut as I lay down the tape and working from one side to another side. So pull it taut, work from one side to another, work your way all the way around the stencil. Again, we want to make sure that we put the tape all the way around, not just on one side. And the tape actually even gives us a little bit more of a border, um, which is nice for um, making sure that we don't accidentally get any of the glass that you create outside of the borders of the of the stencil. So now I want to apply the glass etching cream. So here we go. I'm just going to open this up. This is the same popsicle stick that I used before. Again, we're going to use a very tiny amount of glass etching cream. Be super careful not to get it on your hands. If you guys are working at home, make sure you're wearing gloves. Don't do what I do sometimes. I do crazy things. So then we're just going to apply it to the surface. Now, the reason I'm gonna take my time with this one, and I'm actually gonna turn this towards me, is when we're working with a stencil that's not a sticker stencil, we wanna make sure to always apply the cream at a 90 degree angle. We don't wanna come in at a 45 degree angle because it's actually gonna push the cream underneath the edges of the stencil, and we wanna do everything we can to make a clear, clean border. So I'm gonna turn this towards me so that I can work a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna go like this, and I'm right above it. And when I'm working with this kind of stencil, I'm not even gonna push it into the edges like I do with the sticker stencil. I'm literally just working from above. Look at this. I only need one more hand and then I would have enough hands for this. There we go. Just working above it, pushing that gloss etching cream into the stencil at a 90 degree angle. I'm not pushing it into the edges with a sticker stencil. You want to make sure to push it into the edges so you get a clear, crisp 
clean shape, but with this one, I want to be a little bit more careful. And there we go. This one, I'm not sure if you can tell that I actually applied maybe slightly too much etching cream to this one. Maybe you can see the quality of this being quite thick. So rather than this one, how I have it setting back up um, and it just uh, sitting like a normal pint glass, this one I'm actually gonna leave like this so that the glass etching cream doesn't drip anywhere. So um, if you have a very thin layer and you're not worried about it dripping, then you can set it up like this. But with this thick one, I'm gonna leave it lying down. And so let's just put something next to it so it doesn't roll. And we're gonna leave this on for five minutes. Then I'm gonna give it just a little kind of um, I'm just going to swipe the surface of the glass etching cream and make sure there's not any air bubbles underneath and then we're going to leave it on for another five minutes and then wash it off thoroughly. This one is ready to go. We've definitely had 10 minutes on this one. So I'm going to wash this off completely with running water in a sink and then you'll be able to see um, what it looks like when it's done. So now we have our finished etched pint glasses that we made with the October Craft and Style box, or you can work on your own. You don't need to have the box. Here is the hive that I made, which I think is adorable. I'm super into it. Hopefully you can see it okay. You know, the thing about glass etching is that it can be fairly subtle when you see it on camera or in photographs, but when you see it in real life, it's very distinct frosted surface. So I can even put something inside of it if you like to be able to see it better. And the second one, here is my Deathly Hallows sticker stencil etched pint glass. So with this one, the sticker stencil still on, I washed the glass etching cream with the stencil on. And so the last thing that we do is we just pull it off. All of these stencils you can use and reuse a million times across multiple projects. I love that this stencil is so hard to get off. It's so this is not a stencil that you're only going to use once. You can use this again and again. So we definitely want to be really careful with it. I'm going to peel from the center because it has this like really cool shape on the interior. Boom! Deathly Hallows pint glass. So cute. I love it. And with that sticker stencil, we're going to find the surface where it was living before I found it. It's right here, and I'm just going to try to put it back exactly how I found it, and then you can use this stencil again and again, forever, or as long as it stays sticky. So we've got our monogram glass etched pint glasses. We've got our high glass etched pint glass. We've got these Deathly Hallows pint glasses that we all made with this kit with some glass etching cream that we have here. So this glass etching cream is specific to the surface of glass. That can be any glass. You could make a beautiful um, mirrored surface. You could glass etch uh, like a window um, on your back door, like your family name, for example, and have a beautiful frosted, um, you know, family name across, you know, your back window. You could make vases, you could make mason jars, any kind of glass in the whole world. It doesn't work on any other surfaces. There are definitely some similar products, you know, for different types of surfaces. And in addition to this glass etching, for glass surfaces, you can also get colorant that once you etch it, you can rub the colorant into the frosted part and I can make a Deathly Hallows glass etch pint glass that's blue or that's green or that's red or that's basically any color of the, um, any colorant that I get. So that was our glass etching project from beginning to end. I hope you loved it and that you learn a lot from it. Visit us on the web for more information at popshopamerica.com. We do have these tutorials as written tutorials on the blog. And if you love this video, then make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I'm Brittany Bly from Pop Shop America and happy crafting.